I just bought a hairdryer. Don't laugh. I'll tell you what it's for. I'm down in the workshop today because I want to get the jet engine on the go again. I have no other reason whatsoever than I just want to hear it running again. I know it works. The mount works. We got it up and running. I just want to play with it. And here's where the hairdryer comes in. Usually, I've got an air compressor sitting right there. But the water jet cutter, the big red thing that used to sit there, is over in the new workshop in Tauranga. And it needs the air compressor. So that air compressor is over there. My dad's over there. He's helped me do some water jet cutting basically every day this week. No air compressor. I don't really need an air compressor for this, but the last time I had it up and running, which was also the first time, the jet engine didn't seem to be doing like its cool down phase. Like once it stopped running, the thing would start smoking. Like, I don't know if that's normal. I have no idea. It doesn't say in the manual but I didn't see any sort of cooling. Basically, there's meant to be like a cool down phase for a minute or two where it sort of spins its blades and just blows air through itself, I think. So rather than buying another thousand dollar air compressor, a hairdryer will do. Now I know you're thinking, but Magnus, a hairdryer blows hot air. You're just gonna be heating it up. Not really. The heat out of a hairdryer is, I don't know what heat it is, but it's not 900 degrees centigrade, that's for sure. So whatever heat, is going to be coming out of there, it's so far off the heat that I'm trying to get removed from this, I think it should work fine. I think. Now, truthfully, I'm not sure if the batteries have enough charge. We'll see how it goes. Now if you saw the previous video that I did when I got this jet engine up and running, this little display here, it progressively got from working in the morning to flickering to going completely dead in the afternoon. The good thing is, is that you don't actually need it to run the jet engine, but it's handy to be able to sort of see the RPM and, and other stuff like that. Already, I think it's getting a little bit darker than I just showed you there. Not sure what's wrong with it at all. Now what's interesting is that this engine burns kerosene, remember, and the fuel pipes are still full of fuel. Uh, there's no bubbles in them anywhere. So obviously no air has gotten into the system, the fuel hasn't like leaked out or evaporated out or anything like that. So there should be very little sort of pumping of fuel or anything like that. The only thing, the only thing that might happen is that since there's fuel been sitting in there, some might have leaked into the engine and potentially there could be what is called a hot start. And that basically means there's too much fuel and I don't know, but I think it might involve flames. That's it pretty much ready to go. It's all still wired up from last time, pretty much. I just checked over to make sure it was uh, correct. And you know, this time I think I might... No, no marshmallows, no. The only other thing I need to do is open this door. And the reason for that is that it gets very, very fumey and paraffiny in here. So, kind of want all the fumes to drift silently out the door.
Man, even with the door open, it still gets kind of fumy in there. I've got a sore head now. Right, so I just phoned the company here in New Zealand that I bought the engine off and asked them a couple of questions. Three questions. One, a bad bird. I asked them three questions. One, should the screen be dimming and not working like that and it doesn't sound like it, so maybe they replace the screen or something like that. Two, can I get a signal to go from the ECU back to the, the controller because that controller can accept data from the receiver and so hopefully I can see like the RPM and the temperature and stuff like that on the controller rather than the little screen. And three, what was the third thing again? Oh yeah, three, the cooldown phase. I've not set up the radio correctly. I've just set up the throttle, not the throttle and what's called the trim, which is like a little button. I need to set up those two and that's why it isn't cooling down and I'm having to blast it through either with air or today a hairdryer. But good to know I did the right thing by when seeing smoke, I blasted air at it. So, pat on the back for me. What an idiot. I think that's me done for today. You know, it's a funny thing. Every day, at the end of these daily YouTube videos, I give you a quote and I really, really do my best to tie it into what's, what's happened today, you know, what, what you've seen in the video. Today is tough. I basically worked in the morning, I watched some TED Talks, while I had lunch. Then I went in and bought a hairdryer to get the jet engine going. I fired up the jet engine and had it running just because I wanted to. There's loads of quotes out there, but I can't quite get it to work. But there is one that, that works overall. Not only would it work today, it would work any day. So that's my get out clause, and it's a powerful quote. If I'd heard it five years ago, or any time up until five years ago, 10, 15, whatever years ago, I would have been like, yeah, I'm not living that. But I read it now, and I'm like, I'm living that. The quote is by Matt Selby. And he said, build a life that needs no escape.